You're listening to a Roddenberry podcast. Well, we are in the back half of the week, and it's time for another mission log engage. That's why you're here. Us. That's why we're here. You engage, right. we engage, we all mm-hmm. engage. I'm, I'm John. Norm, and I engage, I engage with John. And, and I engage with you. I'm John. I engage with Norm. And Sometimes we and engage simultaneously. I love it. I love it. It's good, that kind of show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we have a uh, deep breath Ooh. email here. Yeah. From one of our very, uh, I guess, loyal stalwart, um, very articulate, very introspective listeners. A podcaster himself. And a podcaster of his own. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yes. John, John Arminio. And mm-hmm. uh, there's another one of those where I, I had to write back and just say, like, this is so good. That, that I have to share it with everybody. And I, I think Norman, you and I are gonna, just gonna come back and we're, we're just gonna go like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 he's right. So, mm-hmm. all right, <clears throat> here we go. I should have brought a little something to sip before I read this. Um, email from John. A while ago, I tweeted about how all through Deep Space Nine, I was waiting for someone to ask the prophets, what does God need with a starship? the way Captain Kirk does in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier, or what does God need with the space station? Or if not, God, omniscient aliens who experience at all, uh, sorry, all time, all at once, or whatever. I realize The Final Frontier is a flawed film, but I think that moment at the end is so emblematic of Star Trek and its philosophy as to make it an essential part of the franchise. It is such a characteristic Kirk moment as well to not only have the courage to stand up to a being of indescribable power, but also the intelligence to recognize a huckster when he sees one, no matter how powerful they might be. As a Catholic, this is also where Gene Roddenberry's secular humanism meets with my own beliefs, uh, as no creature, no matter how powerful or divine, has the right to ensnare or enslave another in its will. Sentient beings have the right to determine their own destiny, to make their accomplishments on their own, It is this viewpoint that is at the heart of the Prime Directive, no matter how many times Kirk himself violated it. I watched episode after episode of Deep Space Nine in which the prophets interfered in galactic politics, the lives of Bajorans, the Dominion War, and Captain Sisko's own life for reasons entirely their own, reasons they rarely, if if ever, bothered to communicate with anyone. Meanwhile, Sisko himself was happy to take the path of least resistance as he masqueraded as the Messiah for a religion he did not believe in, and Starfleet was all too willing to encourage this state of affairs if it meant maintaining an equilibrium between the Federation and Bajor that allowed them free access to the wormhole. I was hoping Deep Space Nine would, at some point, admonish the wormhole aliens somehow for their interference in the affairs of other sentient beings, for their manipulation of multiple generations of Cisco's, or for imbuing certain beings with a direct link to their outside-of-time celestial thought temple while arbitrarily ignoring others. Instead, the series allowed them to annihilate an entire Dominion fleet on a whim, causing the deaths of thousands, if not millions of beings, beings enslaved by the Dominion, by the way, while the audience is supposed to cheer this last-minute salvation. I understand asking Deep Space Nine to admonish certain behavior is, uh, uh, is uh, anathema to a show created to, uh, created to live in moral gray areas, but when it turns around and asks us to cheer for millions of lives being erased, I don't feel like too much of a hypocrite. Finally, in What You Leave Behind, the last episode of the series, Benjamin Sisko, our supposed hero, is called to join with the prophets for some reason. Abandoning his friends, his new wife and mother-to-be of his second child, and most egregiously, his son Jake. I have a lot of problems with Sisko as a character, especially as a Star Trek captain, but what he never lost sight of was being a great dad. I thought Sisko's best moments were with Jake. And you could see the human caring side of both Captain Sisko and Avery Brooks as they interacted so lovingly with Jake slash Sirach Lofton. For the show to take that away from father, son, and the audience, you thought I was going to say Holy Spirit, didn't you? (laughs) Is a bridge too far and a betrayal of the characters they had built over seven years. 
I understand the DS9 creators and writers wanted to construct a darker, more morally ambiguous story for Star Trek, but for their main character to disavow what made them the best possible version of themselves, to abandon their family for an ambiguous and ill-defined destiny prescribed to them by beings who have been nothing but manipulative and at best aloof, is to be honest, infuriating. I can't help but feel that Sisko's legacy as a character is now a captain of moral compromise, see in the pale moonlight, and a mouthpiece for omnipotent aliens who are obsessed with manipulating one particular planet for some undefined reason. If he had rejected the prophets and chosen to stay with his family, to ask them what do gods need with a space station, his legacy could have been as husband and father what he was best at. Well, for me anyway. Sorry for another long rant. I have some issues with Deep Space Nine, I guess. Live long and prosper, John Arminio. <laughs> right? Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well said. Right. Wait, you got anything to add to that? Well, a, a while back, a, a few episodes ago, we discussed how the end of Deep Space Nine was similar to the end of Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm going to tie. Well, this is on the fly, folks, so please forgive me if I stumble <laughs> a little bit. So I'm going to apply that comparison to an earlier email that we read this week when it came to cultural appropriation, because mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. believe that it all works under this one banner of inconsistent backstory development. Hmm. Okay, so this is what happens when... and. Like I said, I'm only doing this from the armchair quarterback perspective of one person, one yeah, fan. Sure. But when it comes to religion and culturalism, you have to have those backstories and the development of the narratives therein so well defined because you are using them as launching points for character development moving forward. If you do not have them robustly filled in when with detail, with motivation, with necessity, with how it's going to play out 10, 20, 50 years down the line, then all you're doing is using those as gateways to create the narrative du jour, the narrative of the episode. Yeah. That's dangerous when it comes to something as so omnipresently powerful as temporal beings that can exist beyond time and space because they know what's going to happen 10, 50, 100, 100,000 years from the point that story is being told. So tying it back to, does this mimic the Lord of the Rings? No, because at the very beginning of the Lord of the Rings, you have a talisman that sets the story forward, the ring. Hmm. There is no ring in Deep Space hmm. Nine. There isn't really the need or the necessity for a religious movement within Captain Sisko to develop any reason why he is on the side of or advocating for the prophets. Not one reason. Wow. Hey, so I, yeah. <laughs> if you well don't said. have that, if you don't have that, then yeah. why is he advocating them to the point where he would actually disavow his final moments with his own son? Yeah. For what reason? There, there wasn't one from emissary to what you leave behind. Not one. Yeah. Yeah. I look, I, I, I don't want to get worked up again because I already have been worked up about this in the past. But, you know, I, I, I wanted that scene where Cisco says, no, what's important to me is my life, my family, my humanity, the people mm -hmm. who love me. Like that is worth so much more than anything that could be offered to me in the Celestial Temple. I feel like I'm in Discord. I'm like putting up my hand. If I may, Please, John. Yes, yes, If yes. I may. Uh, I, I believe uh, Mr. Lau has a comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. In, in terms of, I want to put this in terms of a God who chose mortality in order for him to, to move forward with his own life. Mm. See, also Superman. Yeah. Superman too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Superman too. Uh -huh. Superman chose to give up his powers in order to live a mortal life with yeah. Lois Lane. Now we saw the, the consequences of that, and sure, there was a questionable way of retconning his abilities back, but sure, yeah, yeah. the point is, is that this is what Cisco should have been given the opportunity to do at the end. Yeah. He did. He delivered the prophets whatever they needed, because it's yeah. really undefinable, yeah. 
And then at the end, he's like, I did what you wanted me to do. I have done what you have wanted me to do for seven years. Now it's my turn. Mm-hmm. I am disavowing my godlike abilities or your invitation for me to join you to go west into the Grey Havens, if you Mm -hmm. want to use the Lord of the Rings again. (laughs) And I want to stay here. I want to live out my mortal life with the people that I love and my son. Yeah. I deserve that. I earned that. Yeah. Right? Hey, Riker turned down godlike powers. He did. So, you know. Foolish. (laughs) Foolish Riker. (laughs) John, thank you so much. Keep those coming, okay? And if you would like to share your comments, uh, you know what to do. Well, Norman, you tell them what to do. Well, you can always email us at missionlog at roddenberry.com. You can always find us on Facebook and Twitter at Mission Log Pod. And remember, if you like what we're talking about here and you want to hear more of what we're saying, make sure you hit the like, share, or subscribe button and make sure that you get all the notifications for when we come up with this new content for you. And remember, with those comments, we may engage with you sometime later on the air.